Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Finger. I'm the chair of the American Joint Committee on Cancer Sections for Ophthalmic Oncology. In that position, I made sure that a representative portion of my eye cancer specialist community was invited to participate as to create the best evidence-based staging systems possible. I have been doing this for 20 years through the 7th and 8th editions of the AJCC's classification. This presentation will describe the impact of AJCC staging by showing you how it has improved the abilities of eye cancer specialists and thus saved the lives of their patients. First, let us acknowledge the American Cancer Society and the American College of Surgeons for their support of the AJCC, Tumor Staging and Ophthalmic Oncology. Let us also acknowledge all the eye cancer specialists, ophthalmologists, oncologists, and allied health professionals that made up the 8th edition AJCC Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force Sites Expert Panel. They all volunteered countless hours for over four years for each edition, crafting what turned out to be the best consensus-driven textbook and staging systems for the most common eye cancers. I would also like to personally thank Dr. Sarah Kuplin, my vice chair, for her countless hours dedicated to this program, and Dr. Mary K. Washington for her support as section chief editor. We all are thankful to the AJCC editorial board and the editor, Dr. Mahul Amin. This editorial depicts where I started with AJCC. This editorial introduced the concept of AJCC TNM staging to the eye cancer community. As you will see during this presentation, its use sparked a revolution in our field. This editorial explained that AJCC TNM was widely used for most non-ophthalmic cancers. It explained that a common language for oncologists, both pediatric and medical, radiation therapy and pathology, provided a way for all specialists to be on the same page when describing, treating, and following their patient's progress. For research, this editorial taught that until we all use the same classifications for ocular cancers, our research studies were not directly comparable. That without common definitions, we could not have true meta-analysis of our data. For informed consent, this editorial explained that by defining tumor size and extent prior to treatment allows us to accurately explain to our patients that tumors of certain sizes or locations are more or less likely to respond to treatments or exhibit certain side effects. Lastly, this editorial was a call to arms. It implored all eye cancer specialists, editors, organizational heads, registrars, to use a common language to improve science and patient care. I explained that only when we all speak ocular tumor will, will we be able to understand each other's work and more effectively help our patients with eye cancer. Then came the hard work. The sixth edition was not being used by eye cancer specialists and something radical needed to be done. As chair for the seventh edition, I endeavored to select committee participants based on their prior record of eye cancer publications and subspecialty interest. In addition, the AJCC committee was internationalized. It now included members of the UICC and other eye cancer specialists from around the world. Expert clinical and pathology peer review teams were formed. The initial groups reviewed and synthesized the literature for medical evidence, consensus, and then put that to paper. The second group, with similar expertise, served to review their work. All participated in a review of the final drafts. This process typically involved monthly phone meetings and periodic in-person discussions over a four-year duration. AJCC eye cancer staging was quickly adopted by most ophthalmic journals, most societies, and most eye cancer specialists. 
Therefore, at the time of the 8th edition AJCC system was published, I wrote this editorial to discuss how it was a foundational element for collaboration in ophthalmic oncology. As you will see in the upcoming slides, select members of the ophthalmic sites expert panel used AJCC staging and other data fields to create independent, multi-center, international disease-specific tumor registries. Such pooled data was found to provide essential, statistically significant medical evidence to study tumors like uveal melanoma, retinoblastoma, ocular adnexal lymphoma, and others. At the same time, many diagnostic, therapeutic, and epidemiologic studies were adopting AJCC staging. For example, in one registry, over 2,000 children with retinoblastoma were enrolled to provide evidence that AJCC staging of retinoblastoma is at least equal to the prior WEH and ICRB methods, but exceeds them due to the inclusion of extraocular disease, metastasis, and heritable trait. An international data pooling registry of more than a thousand cases of ocular and nexal lymphoma revealed evidence that radiation treatment was associated with less recurrence for follicular and malt lymphomas. Three sets of AJCC staged uveal melanomas when added to demonstrate that 18,909 cases supported or validated the 8th edition CT size categories used for TNM classification of uveal melanoma. AJCC eye cancer staging was quickly adopted by eye cancer research. In addition to the hundreds if not thousands of research articles that include AJCC staging, three multicenter international registries were formed, the AJCC OOTF or Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force, MD Anderson's registry, and the Danish International Ocular Adnexal Lymphoma Registry have been the most productive. At first, Dr. Rand Simpson and I recognized the world-class IT department built by Dr. Brenda Galley at Princess Margaret Comprehensive Cancer Center. Our first task was to study choroidal melanoma, specifically to validate the 7th edition AJCC staging system. We formed a committee to create the necessary data fields, contracts, IRB committee approvals that would be required for all sites. Then recruitment of international sites followed and involved certification and data entry. After years of data entry, it was statistically analyzed and tabulated to form the basis of publications. Then we formed a writing committee to produce manuscripts that were criticized and eventually approved by each and every author prior to submission and eventual publication. Our first manuscript investigated the prognostic value of the 7th edition AJCC staging system on North American patients with choroidal melanoma. It was important to use North American patients because the prior AJCC committee and this table that was created was based on European data on over 7,000 cases. Thus, the AJCC Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force Registry was used to independently validate the 8th edition AJCC staging, utilizing non-overlapping data sets of patients. If we add an additional study from a single center, the outcome data from nearly 19,000 patients have been used to demonstrate that tumor height and width can be used to predict metastatic uveal melanoma. After validation of the AJCC staging parameters, this same AJCC OOTF registry data was used to answer important clinical questions. For example, it provided statistically significant evidence that failure of initial local control was associated with a 6.3 times increased hazard ratio for metastatic disease. Most recently, it was used to describe patients with stage 4 disease at presentation and found that total body PET-CT scanning was more likely to reveal these multi-organ metastases. Turning our attention to retinoblastoma, 
The second Princess Margaret Cancer Center-based registry expanded to 18 centers in 13 countries and on six continents. Note all the new authors included in this registry-based study. Courtesy of the Eye Cancer Foundation, open access reprints exist for papers on validation of the 8th edition AJCC staging system for retinoblastoma. These papers compare and contrast AJCC with the prior ocular staging systems called WEH and ICRB to predict both mortality and globe salvage. The AJCC OOTF examines socioeconomic factors and how they correlate to rates of RB mortality, how intraocular retinoblastoma C distribution affects tumor outcome, and most recently, how AJCC RB staging can be used to predict high-risk pathologic features prior to removal of the eye, also called enucleation. This finding will aid eye cancer specialists make tough clinical choices. This registry will add medical evidence that may be used for the AJCC 9th edition revisions. Regarding conjunctival melanoma, the 8th edition AJCC staging system saw a change in nomenclature. Whereas primary acquired melanosis with atypia was replaced with the term conjunctival melanoma in situ. This was important because PAM with atypia was occasionally thought to be a benign diagnosis by patients and some doctors, whereas melanoma in situ was obviously malignant. This new nomenclature was consistent with what was being used for other non-ocular sites. Separately, the AJCC OTF registry for conjunctival melanoma revealed that AJCC staging could be used to predict metastasis and local tumor recurrence. Further data analysis revealed variable methods of treatment and high rates of recurrence. However, since that publication, systemic immunotherapy has been found very effective for diffuse, multifocal, and metastatic disease. Dr. Jonathan J. Dutton took lead on the AJCC orbital sarcoma section and as editor-in-chief of the Journal of the American Society of Ophthalmic Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery. He incorporated AJC staging in the instructions for authors. The journal and society understand the value of AJCC staging, which is required on all submissions concerning malignancies. Regarding orbital sarcoma, this JAMA ophthalmology article describes the prognostic performance of the 8th edition AJCC TNM classification for orbital sarcoma. Herein they found that the CT3 category and a largest diameter of greater than 3 cm was significantly associated with higher risk of metastatic death. Dr. Stefan Higard from Denmark heads a multi-center international data sharing effort investigating ocular adnexal lymphoma. Higard has noted AJC staging has been fully adopted regarding ocular adnexal lymphoma all over the world. I quote, both in the retrospective national international societies and in ophthalmological cancel journals, AJCC staging is fully implemented in research and publications, presentations, and international meetings. AJCC staging is used in national and international registries and in prospective trials regarding ocular adnexal lymphoma. We have incorporated it in the instructions for authors for Acta Ophthalmologica and Ocular Oncology and Pathology, the Journal of the International Society of Ophthalmic Oncology. Dr. Higard notes that his Danish-based ocular adnexal lymphoma registry has published 10 peer review articles utilizing AJCC OAL staging. They found significant evidence that histopathologic subtype was a dominant predictor of mortality. However, in their most recent study, they found eyelid involvement was also a risk factor for systemic disease. Treatment with radiation therapy was associated with less subsequent systemic disease for both malt and follicular lymphomas. Of interest, they also found that follicular 
lymphoma was more common in females, whereas mental cell was more common in males. From one of my earlier slides, you'll remember that a new site-specific ocular agnexal lymphoma staging system was created for the 7th edition AJCC staging system and updated once again for the 8th. The Danish registry first examined these four ocular adnexal sites, each examined a different location, for example, orbit, conjunctiva, eyelid, and lacrimal gland, for clinical characteristics, methods of treatment, and outcomes. These four papers from the Danish multinational study concentrated on clinical pathologic features associated with different cell types, like mantle cell, large B cell, follicular, and marginal B cell ocular adnexal lymphomas. Dr. Bita Ismaili of MD Anderson Cancer Center created the third registry discussed in this talk. She has been one of the most prolific investigators and supporters of AJCC staging in ophthalmic oncology. Her studies have led to publication of 24 peer-reviewed papers questioning, validating, and ultimately improving AJCC staging. During the 8th edition process, she not only led the AJCC eyelid carcinoma section, but also co-authored two orbital and the conjunctival melanoma sections. Dr. Ismaili's registry and group used both single and multi-center data to validate the changes in AJCC staging for eyelid carcinomas. They used AJCC staging to predict local recurrence and metastasis from sebaceous carcinoma of the eyelid. In addition, they used AJCC staging to answer open questions about the characteristics of conjunctival melanomas, offering new medical evidence for future changes in AJCC classifications. Here, the MD Anderson Registry and working groups examined the use of AJCC staging to predict local recurrence and metastatic death for orbital sarcoma, lacrimal gland carcinoma, and conjunctival squamous carcinoma. Specifically, the MD Anderson group noted that medical evidence used to update the eyelid carcinoma section of the 8th edition AJCC staging system resulted in an 80% change in the T categories used for those tumors. This resulted in validation of those new criteria for squamous and sebaceous cell carcinomas. In addition, Dr. Ismaili's group validated the predictive power of AJCC staging for lacrimal gland carcinoma, recurrence, and metastasis, as well as orbital sarcoma. All these registries have provided the data needed to investigate the predictive power of AJCC staging for metastasis, mortality, and globe salvage. And it didn't always come back positive. For example, the Danish study revealed that histopathologic subtype was more closely linked to metastasis and cancer-related death as compared to tumor location. However, their most recent publication suggests that eyelid involvement is associated with systemic disease. The AJCC eye cancer staging systems were created by consensus of a large, carefully selected portion of the ophthalmic oncology community. We found that what was made by the community was accepted by the community. It was accepted by ophthalmology journals, societies, and the UICC. These systems have been accepted into the mainstream of cancer care and ophthalmic oncology has been brought back into the mainstream of cancer care. This is evidenced by AJCC staging being used clinically and as a foundational element for multi-center international data pooling registries. These in turn have provided important, statistically significant medical evidence answering clinical and research questions. These results will help AJCC in the future to improve the 9th and 10th and 11th edition. You see, unlike prior staging systems in ophthalmic oncology, AJCC is dynamic. It undergoes continual periodic updates. So, do you speak ocular tumor? 
yes. Ophthalmic oncology has embraced a common language that allows us to improve the care of our eye cancer patients. This is Dr. Paul Finger. I would like to personally thank Myrna and John Daniels, whose contributions to the Princess Margaret Comprehensive Cancer Center's IT program made the AJCC Ophthalmic Oncology Task Force Registry possible. I would also like to thank the Eye Cancer Foundation, which has supported data analysis, research fellowships, presentations, and publications of registry work. I would like to thank Drs. Bita Ismaili, Stefan Higard, and Jonathan Dutton for their study and published critical analysis of the staging systems. I would also like to thank Dr. Barrett Hike, the American College of Surgeons, the American Joint Committee on Cancer, and the American Cancer Society for their support, specifically trusting me with the responsibility to bring AJCC TNMH staging to eye cancer specialists around the world. We are now speaking a common scientific language. We are comparing our results in a standardized way and thus answering key clinical questions needed for patient care. I thank you for your attention.